So you want all the financial and environmental benefits of pure electric running for your short routine journeys, but you don't want to faff about with rapid chargers on the long journeys. You are probably looking at one of these. After all, plug-in hybrids really do seem to offer the best of both worlds with a combination of a petrol engine and an electric motor, and none more so than the Volkswagen Golf GTE. After all, it does have an official pure electric range of up to 40 miles, and it's got loads of comfort and tech equipment. And look at it, it's a Golf. It looks great, you know exactly what you're getting. So what is not to like? Well, probably the fact that it costs £36,000. Before we find out if the Golf can justify that price, don't forget to subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of our videos. Now, I have to say, I actually preferred the slightly cleaner, smoother lines of the Mark 7 Golf, but this new Mark 8 Golf, with its angrier, slightly sort of droopier face, still a pretty handsome looking thing, especially the GTE, because I do really like this blue highlight here is GTE specific and you definitely get sort of more sport than efficiency styling cues on this. So you've even got some of the honeycomb styling that you might expect on the Golf GTI. You get the red brake calipers. Everything about it sort of says performance rather than economy. Before we get stuck into what the GTE is like to drive and to live with, here are five things that you should know about the new plug-in hybrid Golf. Those headlights are intelligent LED matrix lights as standard, so they give constant high beam visibility at night without dazzling other traffic and they work brilliantly too. A 10 inch InnerVision cockpit in the GTE means that you can vary the display layout and information and even have the map and nav route in widescreen view. The new smart climate control and voice control in the Golf is, uh, well, it's a bit hit and miss as with all of these voice control systems to be honest, but it's one of the better ones I have to say. So here goes. Hello Volkswagen. What can I do for you? My feet are cold. No problem. Warming feet at the front right. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure her grammar's right, but she did do it, so credit there. <laughs> the Golf GTE gets a Type 2 cable that's compatible with most public chargers, and there's a 3-pin cable included too for plugging into a normal domestic socket. This is the eighth generation of the Golf, and overall, it has been in production for 45 years and has sold more than 35 million examples. By any measure, it is the default family hatchback. So the thing about Golf is that you know exactly what you're getting. It's very reassuring. You know exactly what it is. But I have to say, even if you've owned one of these before, you might be disappointed in the boot that you get with the GTE because that 13 kilowatt hour battery takes up a lot of space down there. So there's no variable height boot floor and the overall space you get is only 273 litres, which for some context is roughly the same as what you get in a Toyota Yaris and is about 100 litres less than you get in a normal Golf that hasn't got those batteries. So to be honest, it really is a bit disappointing. So yes, you've got a decent wide open boot hatch, good square shaped boot, but without that variable floor and the space down there and without any cable storage, to be honest, this is pretty poor. So rear passenger space in the Golf is very good actually. You get loads of headroom, legroom is pretty decent. You definitely get a bit more than you do in a Mercedes A-Class plug-in hybrid, for instance. But of course you can go for the cheaper, bigger option of the Skoda Octavia and you get loads more passenger space in that. But if you want your compact hatchback like this, then the Golf is pretty good. The cabin in the Golf is uh, definitely one of the reasons you might buy it, I reckon. It looks really good. I particularly like the very subtle honeycomb trim that you get in here. Um, the driving position is really comfortable. You get sports seats in the GTE, so you get lots of side support. I do feel like you should have electric adjustment at this sort of price, but you get manual adjustment. It does at least have a bit of lumbar adjustment as well. So really nice driving position, good visibility too, and everything feels really solidly put together and just very nice really. However, as with every modern car at the moment, you are absolutely focused on this big touchscreen in the middle of the dash. But it's just not a terribly easy system and dash to use. Sure, the touchscreen responds quickly, but it's too easy to change the temperature by accident because the touch sensitive switches are just below the screen and the menu layouts aren't as logical as you might hope. You can search for chargers, of course, and there's all your electric car information and settings, but this system could definitely be more intuitive. Once you have figured out how to use the Volkswagen's slightly awkward touchscreen, the Golf is easy to live with and charge. 
maximum charging speed is 3.6 kilowatts, so a home wall box will deliver a full top up of the 13 kilowatt hour battery in 3 hours and 45 minutes, or your normal 3 pin socket will do it in around 5 hours. There's no rapid charging, so while the Golf will charge up at any AC Type 2 station, an additional 10 miles of range per hour is as fast as charging gets in the GTE. Well, it looks quite GTI-like and it's got quite GTI-like performance, this thing as well. So, 0-62 in 6.7 seconds, and that is only 0.4 seconds slower than a GTI. But, does it feel like a GTI? Not really, I have to say. It does have really good straight line pace. I think that is kind of its party trick, really. So you can stick it in sport mode. It does go for it. It's got really decent performance. It's got a six-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox. I've got to say, that 1.4-litre petrol engine, it's a bit sort of coarse. If anything, it's actually nicer to drive in pure electric mode, which may well suit the sort of people looking at a GTE, because for all of its kind of sporting styling, I think it's really efficiency. It's why you buy this car, isn't it? 242 brake horsepower or not. Even with that straight line performance making this really good for overtaking or properly fast merges onto the motorway, that kind of thing, it never feels like a proper hot hatch, despite its numbers. It just doesn't. It just feels like a car you want to kind of tool around in and relax and it's a good commuter. So it's, it's odd because on paper you think this is going to be quite sporty, but in practice, it's really not. Again, back into the mode screen and you can stick it in pure electric mode and you get a 108 brake horsepower electric motor. It gives really decent nippy performance at slow speeds around town, which is great for that. And it does start in pure electric mode by default whenever you start the car too, so, which I quite like. It means you get the best efficiency without having to faff about with the modes every time you get in the car. You can do motorway speeds very easily in electric mode and it doesn't really feel terribly kind of neutered at all, the performance at motorway speeds. It's nice to drive. I think actually in pure electric mode, that refinement and the sort of quite seamless build of acceleration, it's really good. And I would add that it has got all the modes you would expect of a plug-in hybrid too, including, it's quite clever, you can actually set the percentage of charge that you want the car to save. So it's useful because if your commute involves going up the motorway quite a way, and then you've got a bit of town at the end, then you can obviously save 50% of your battery charge for them, so you get the best efficiency. Or, of course, you can just stick it in hybrid mode and the car will make the best of both the petrol and electric efficiency. Ride comfort is pretty decent as well, as long as it's in comfort anyway. So our test car has got optional adaptive dampers, which cost nearly 800 pounds. Sport, definitely things get a bit wooden, I think. It definitely picks up the potholes and even kind of odd cambers and undulations in the road just a bit too much. I think it's even more fun in comfort, to be honest. Also, I would add that in sport mode, the gearbox all gets a bit odd, so it actually will charge the battery more when it's in sport mode, but it also means that when you lift off the throttle, the brake regen system becomes much stronger. So you get a strange sense that as soon as you're in sport mode and you want to go a bit quicker, weirdly, the car feels like it wants to go slower. When it comes to the real world range and economy of the Golf, we've found that it's quite easy to get around 30 miles of pure electric driving, unless you're on the motorway, where the range drops to nearly 20 miles. Of course, the 1.4 litre turbocharged petrol engine keeps you going when there's no electric power left in the battery. And at that point, it's great to see that you'll get a respectable 40 to 45 mpg without trying very hard at all. The Golf GTE promises to be really peachy to live with then. It's gonna be cheap to run, that's for sure. Charging it at home is gonna cost between one pound and two pounds, depending on if you use off-peak tariffs or not. And that equates roughly to half as much as you pay to run that petrol engine. So you definitely need to be plugging this in and using the electric motor as much as possible to make the most of it. But it has to be said, a Mercedes A-Class plug-in hybrid goes further and costs less. An Octavia costs five grand less and is way bigger. And not only that, but if you're on the fence in terms of whether to go for plug-in hybrid or pure EV, the cost of this thing, you can get a really well-spec Volkswagen ID3, a Peugeot E2008. You're not even far off the cost of a Tesla Model 3. So yes, the Golf is a really nice example of a plug-in hybrid. It's just a lovely car but you can definitely get more for your money elsewhere. Don't forget to click like while you're here and subscribe to our YouTube channel and head to Cargurus UK for loads of fantastic used cars from top rated dealers.